I want to go across uh, first and foremost to YS Rajan. Uh, sir, if you could begin by explaining to our viewers the circumstances under which ISRO's uh, space team will decide tomorrow whether or not to go ahead with the landing. We're told that a plan B is ready and that there is a possibility that the landing of uh, the Chandrayaan-3 could get pushed to Sunday the 27th. So what are the kind of conditions that ISRO scientists will be looking out for which will help them determine whether to go for that attempt at a soft landing or to delay it till Sunday? See, this is a question on which uh, I won't be able to answer anything substantively truthfully because as of now we are going by the same thing what is going on the scheduled time, 547 goes into the autonomous landing system and then 602 or 603. Maybe since you have got uh, another, right? Uh, maybe you may be able to say something, but uh, I, I wouldn't like to venture okay. into saying something. I, I respect here. that. By, so by me all, another, by let me all ask. means, yes. it look, yes. appears that it will land on very correctly on time. Okay, you're saying you think chances of a landing being attempted as per schedule are higher. Malaswami Anadurai, as the moon man of India, could you explain, sir, the circumstances which will be involved in determining whether to go ahead with that landing to try and do what no country has pulled off so far or to push it till Sunday? Yeah, you, if you look at that, uh, every uh, launch, even the rocket launch, has its own the countdowns uh, for the uh, targeted launch date and depends on 36 hours before, 48 hours before. Uh, you would have seen that PSLV, GSLV launches. And uh, that, that means every uh, second ticks, uh, we have the host of the parameters to be verified, host of the activities to be verified, and not only on the hardware which is sitting on the launch pad, as well as the ground systems, uh, ground systems sitting in Srigari Kota, as well as the down range ground systems, uh, communication channels, radar systems. I think many of the host of the things needs to be uh, verified, including communication links, uh, I think a host of the things needs to be verified uh, and, e and each one has been identified uh, responsible people, they will do it and they will report back to the launch authorization board and launch authorization board tells, yes, you can go for the targeted rate, uh, whether all systems are ready. I think the process is uh, uh, going on and uh, that, that I think we have to wait and see what uh, finally, because uh, this countdown, uh, it also gives a room for the possibility if something is uh, uh, abnormal you are seeing a uh, possible room to correct also i think we have to keep in mind uh, that also uh, keeping in mind i think uh, we have to keep the fingers crossed until uh, uh, the tomorrow uh, the uh, like like launch authorization board the mission management council uh, will uh, uh, look at all the uh, responsible people whomever they have done and uh, their reports and accordingly will go and you would have seen even the launch time before uh, go is given by the mission director uh, uh, each one of the stations uh, giving green, 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 green. They are not only looking all the things put together only, the so-called launch takes place. And uh, even, and it's no difference when you are going for the soft uh, landing is concerned. All the systems on the lander, the software, the hardware systems, and the ground systems, and the ground communication uh, from the lander to all the way to the uh, earth, both directly to the earth and as well as through Chandrayaan 2. I think host of the thing and two-way communication and what all programs we uploaded here, uh, whether it is being, it has normally be downloaded and read uh, thoroughly, whether not even a single bit uh, has an issue. Okay, okay. then only will go. So, so, okay. so Chikapa, what would be going through the minds of our scientists? Because an India-Pakistan cricket match during a World Cup is pressure. This, I just get the feeling, is infinitely more pressure than an India Park cricket game. You know, and these are men of science and there are these namazes and these pujas, havans happening all over the country. How does it play on their psyche? Does it at all? No, I was speaking to Dr. Somnath, the chairman of ISRO yesterday. I think uh, he's experienced, like all space scientists have experienced, both failure and success. And in fact, Dr. Kalam, whom Dr. Vyas Rajan knows so well, and I'm so happy to see Dr. Rajan on this, used to say, Failure is the stepping stone of success. So ISRO has learned over a period of time of that. So they have, uh, you know, put aside the set, uh, you know, not put aside, but actually studied the setback that happened in Chandrayaan 2. And then what he says is, I mean, let's look at what really failed at Chandrayaan 2, right? There was a propulsion failure. 
there was an excel, too much speed going on uh, at, at a particular point of the descent, then there was a guidance failure and a control failure that landed in the crash. So in each of these three sectors, from what he told me was that he has built, if earlier it was success oriented, that you know everything will work and therefore you build parameters only for that success, this time it's failure oriented. So they've calculated at every stage, whether it's the propulsion and the thrusters and how much is it giving and what is this thing, they've built a redundancy in that. In the guidance system, they build redundancies and control and landing. But so, apart from algo testing, this right. has never really been tested in the Absolutely. real world. This is happened. This is something which has been attempted, which has never been done by any country ever to land on the South Pole of the Moon. Well, you know, the, the, the people have landed and also, let's not, on the, on the South Pole is a little more difficult because there's plenty of craters, there are problems of shadows, uh, you have to get your solar panels right because, you know, if you're landing at the equator, which is the easiest of the lot, where most people have done that, you, you don't have the kind of complications that are there. But at the South Pole, why, why are we doing it? Because there's a lot of water ice over there, and all future missions would, you know, if we have to colonize the moon, we have to find water, not only to, uh, you know, uh, uh, live there, as well as for, say, generating hydrogen for, uh, you know, a spacecraft that we can take to Mars and others. So us going to South Pole is a calculated strategic move. It's tough, it's risky, because there are a lot of boulders, there are a lot of craters, but that's the challenge. And I think this time what they have done is, last time there was a small window, uh, in the sense a small area, which is around uh, 500 square, uh, you know, uh, uh, like a football field that they decided to land. But this time they've expanded it to even larger, four square kilometers, which gives you, uh, you know, a lot more sort of uh, leeway. Last time they were rushing through to land at that precise point. The second thing I think is, as different from Chandrayaan 2 is they're carrying more fuel. Okay. And that's very important. So, because what happens is if you have a deviation, you have enough fuel to burn to correct it and get it can, there. Can you explain, Dr. Rajan, to our viewers, how do you ensure that the uh, Vikram rover, once it lands, is controlled in a way that it doesn't get stuck in any of these boulders or the sandy formations on the, uh, on the surface of the moon? And the fear that even if there is a successful landing, the need to control the lunar probe to be able to execute all the scientific experiments uh, is successful. Okay, thank you. See, main thing is, let us remember one thing. All what could be done is before 5.47 p.m. Uh -huh. tomorrow. Once that 5.47 is gone, it goes to the automatic landing system. Okay. Then they are also in the same boat like us, because then... Uh, the Vikram and Pragyan, uh, Pragyan of course are inside, so you, they are of their own, okay? So, but to answer your question, what happens? The crater, this one, that one, etc. a lot of data has come from Chandrayaan to itself. In fact, Chairman is wrong. in earlier, in the beginning part of it, he explained several things. In that, he said that even for the landing for Chandrayaan 2, they had to restrict it to a certain area because that's all what they knew. Now, because of the Chandrayaan 2, they have got a much more, so it has got more areas in which it can be landing. Then it has got automatic velocity seeing, all for the landing, and then altimeter, etc. So once it lands, soft land, we all pray that it takes place well, then it is lander lander of its own everything that fellow will this will come out and then they have programmed it on all possible modes which can take place this failure if it takes place what it will do if it may be encounter this what it will do if it is a slope what it will do or if something else almost for most of these things those programs have been loaded into the computer system there and there are so many sensors there, underneath camera, this, et cetera, et cetera. With all of that, they will guide by themselves and go. It is for these 14 days. That's what it is. You know, what what the, the makes this key, even key, more key fascinating... Is land, land software successfully. You know, and which is why I think it will be one of the biggest visual moments uh, of the you year know, and arguably of all time is because there will be live minutes. footage coming in. Now, just imagine, this is as the Chandrayaan, and explain, Dr. Rajan, the technology involved in that, as the Chandrayaan 3 lands, it's not as if you're seeing an empty screen, because initially, when a rocket would take off, you'd see the initial few seconds, and then the rocket would be gone. Here, you've got cameras on the Chandrayaan 3 that track 
the Chandrayaan 3 as it lands. That's quite incredible. How is that happening, sir? That is happening because they have put a camera there and then you need communication. Uh, Chandrayaan 3 itself, the fellow who, who took it, the orbiter, it has got a link. And then in addition, Chandrayaan 2 was working well, so that lander has made a link to that also. So it has got two links. It, from the lander, even the after the thing, when the rover also comes down, it will give to the lander, to the Vikram. Then there are two communication channels which communicate with the Earth. The ISRO's deep space uh, network or something, they say. So now everything can be seen. Even in fact, one of the ISRO mission, they did it one camera in the bottom also. They kept one of the launch vehicle. In future, you will see such small TV cameras will be available. So it'd be a great thing for you people. All oh, these absolutely. images will come. So oh, this which one is, yeah. is, you're seeing it. Now you will see, even when the, all those things, soft landing, etc., are taking place, you will see those. What I said was, you can't do any, any control on it. Uh, ALS <laughs> takes over. It comes and soft land. Then about two hours or so, I think they have programmed it. Uh, maybe even there they might have given some, this one where the dust and everything has settled. Then the one panel comes out. Then like uh, as we come in the uh, aircraft, sometimes the emergency landing, they put a one slide, it comes. So this will come. In that, like uh, somebody explained it very beautifully, kangaroo's child, like that, ah. it will leave it in. So then... Then that is Pragyan. It is named Pragyan. Little tough to make it. So that is that fellow will start moving around. And when it moves around, it will always be in touch with the mother, Vikram. And all the data it's collect, the two payloads also which will give there. So whatever it does, whatever it goes, uh, 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 Vikram also will be seeing it. 